Hello everybody, we're going to take a look at a problem where we have two different objects traveling and we're going to look at the intersection of their paths. One of the objects is going to be accelerating at a constant rate. In this problem I call it a massive freight train. It is 348 meters long. It begins from rest at time equals zero. And the train has this relatively small acceleration of 0.24 meters per second squared. The second object that's traveling is a car that is traveling at a constant velocity of 25 meters per second. However, it starts behind the train. In fact, I'm giving this distance or this length of the train, I specifically say it starts 0.8 kilometers behind the back of the train. And in the end, we are interested in the location and the time for when the family passes the front of the train. So I have the ability to make a decision here about what I call the reference location. What is the position zero? I am going to go ahead and choose to make it the back of the train. I'm interested in when the family crosses the front of the train and that's why I have the this number here which is significant to this problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write down two different functions, one for the train, one for the car. For the train, I have acceleration, so I have to use the equation that involves acceleration terms. And it is going to be d as a function of time is equal to one half the acceleration. And this is the acceleration. So I almost entirely have unit agreement in this problem, except for this one guy over here. This is going to become 800 meters. That's the number that I'm going to use. Once I make that statement, now I do have unit agreement with all of my different numbers in this problem. And now I'm going to proceed, but I'm not going to actually show my units from here on out. So that guy, though, we don't want to accidentally use. Back to the function, it is one half the acceleration, which is a 0 0.12 times t squared plus the initial velocity was 0 plus now this is where it's a little interesting for me I'm gonna really write my function relative to the front of the train since that's what I'm interested in knowing about and so even though the back of the train is the zero location I'm gonna say the initial position of the front of the train is the 348 meters now I will write a function for the car the car is traveling with a constant velocity so I don't need that acceleration term it's going to look something like this. The velocity was 25 meters per second times time plus its initial location. It's actually behind the reference though. It is 800 meters behind the reference. I'm going to actually use a minus 800. These are my two functions. I'm going to set the functions equal to each other to see if there's a location where they intersect. That's going to look like this, 25t minus 800 is equal to 0.12t squared plus 348. Now I need to group my like terms. You can already tell this is going to be a quadratic because here's a t squared and there's a t and I still have a constant term there's no way avoiding having to use the quadratic equation so if that's the case I'm gonna go ahead and move everything to one side of the equation so I'm gonna have 0 equals now I'll throw in my uh, t squared term 0 0.12 t squared that means I need to swing this term over to the other side of the equation so it's gonna be minus 25 t then it is a plus 348 plus 800 so that is a 1148 and as we would expect we should find two solutions and this one indeed has two solutions the first solution is at 68.3 seconds so seconds and the other solution is 140 seconds this is a situation where both of these solutions actually make perfect sense Conceptually what's going to happen is initially the car is behind the train and the train is traveling slow so the car is making progress it will pass the front of the train however in the problem statement the train is continuing this acceleration 
And so at some point it will get really, really fast and it will speed back up and it will pass the car again. You have two locations. The first one is when the car passes the train and then this one is where the train passes the car. Let's take a look at this problem graphically. We've actually solved the main question that we were asked. Uh, you know, when does the car pass the front of the train? Well, that was this 68.3 seconds number. So that was the, the main question that was asked here. When we graph this up, though, for the sake of just interest, I think I want to show both solutions. So I'm going to make sure that I have enough on my time axes that I get both of them in there. And I believe what I'll do is make each one of these 20 seconds. So this is going to be 20 seconds, 40, 60, 140, and 160. Now what we need to do is make sure I cover all the ground on the positions. And as I'm looking at this, I see that, aha, I'm not actually done with this problem. I do need to figure out the shared position of both of these objects at these two different times. So what we do at this point is we plug these different numbers back into either equation. If we've done it correctly, both equations should always return the same number because it's supposed to be when they're crossing. First, I'm going to go ahead and use the easier of my two equations, and I'm going to say for that car that's right there, its position at 68.3 seconds is going to be equal to 25 times 68.3 minus 800, that is equal to 907.5 meters. And as a check, you can always do that in the other equation as well. I'll do it just this one time. So this checks to make sure our equations are at least good. So D of 68.3 is now also going to be equal to 0 0.12 multiplied by 68.3 squared plus 348. Okay, and aside from some small rounding errors, I definitely get the same thing. So I'm happy with my functions. There's the first place that they cross when the car passes the front of the train. Now I'll only do this one one time. Let's get the other solution here. So D at 140, so when the train catches back up to the car, it's going to be 25 multiplied by 140 seconds minus 800. D of 140 is equal to 2,700 meters. Okay, and if I want to show everything that's interesting in this problem, I need to be able to get in this uh, negative 800 as the start location of the car, and I need to be able to go beyond this 2,700 meters. I'm going to have each tick mark represent 500 meters, and this is going to serve as my origin. And so this is going to be negative 1,000 down here. That means that this would be positive 1,000. This right here is going to be positive 2,000. And then up here would be 3,000. So now we will go in and we will put down information that I know. First, the car. At time zero, the car is located about here at negative 800. At 68.3 seconds, the car is located about here that's when they cross, so that's about 907.5. That's at least what I'm claiming. So that line is at least approximately right. It may fall apart a little bit towards the top right there. The train starts here, also goes through this location here, and then, of course, both vehicles at 140 seconds should cross through at about here. So that blue one should be going through that as well. That's the 2700 mark. The train is a concave up parabola because that is a positive coefficient in front of the t squared. This one's going to be a little harder to draw here. I think that's the right spirit, but that's a horrible parabola. So just kind of keep that in mind. It certainly crosses at those three locations but it's not intended to look so gangly. If we take a step back though, I think now we've certainly accomplished everything we wanted to. How long will it take for the family to pass the front of the train? It's right here. So there's 68.3 seconds. Where are they going to pass at? They have a shared location of 907.5 meters. 
And then just because I thought it was interesting, we looked at this other location where the train has picked up speed and it's now actually passed the car. That happened at 2,700 meters and it was at 140 seconds. Great, so hopefully everything there made sense to you and if it did, you should certainly let your computer know.